Welcome back, I am Ashley with Uncomplicate Bed. So glad to have you back with us today. We are continuing with our series on the Florida Best Standards. Today, ELA expectation number three, making inferences. If you haven't checked out some of our other videos on the ELA expectations, be sure to check those out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click that bell down below. Now, in today's video, you're going to learn about how making inferences shows up in the ELA expectations, or rather how it doesn't. And I've got some good resources for you to use in your classroom tomorrow. So with that, let's dive in. All right, big news, brace yourself. There is no grade level specific benchmark on making inferences. I know, crazy, right? Zero. Now, it does sprinkle itself throughout some of the benchmark clarifications under author, author's purpose and vocabulary in seventh and up, but that's it. Like, seriously, if you do a fine search for the word infer, it's going to come up only 17 times in the entire manual, and five of those are just on the ELA expectation. Two of those are part of Dante's Inferno, which appears in high school lit. So, good thing we have this overarching. ELA expectation for making inferences. This just reiterates how important it is that we intentionally plan for these ELA expectations and specifically making inferences. I'm actually cool with not having a specific benchmark for it for each grade level as long as we're weaving it in. So, which of the ELA benchmarks does making inferences work best with? Let's take a look. Let's start in the reading strand under the standard of poetry and prose. Actually, every single one of these benchmarks, you can weave inferring into it, like literary elements and identifying character traits. In theme, I mean, once we get to first grade, oftentimes the theme has to be inferred. In perspective and point of view, we have to infer the character's perspectives and sometimes relationships. And of course, in poetry, pretty much all of poetry requires some sort of inferencing. Staying in the reading strand, but heading over into the standard on informational text, again, all four benchmarks can apply to inferring. We have to infer the structure and how the text features add to the meaning of the text, identifying the central idea, what is the author's purpose, and what is the author's stance on a certain topic. We are still in the reading strand, but for this one, I find that there is one of the benchmarks that works perfect under across genres, and that's figurative language. Of course, inferring is trying to figure out what isn't explicitly stated, and this works perfectly. Then we move into the vocabulary strand. Of course, there's only one standard here, finding meaning. And context and connotation requires all kinds of inferencing skills. Use what we read and know about a topic to determine the meaning of an unknown word. That is inferencing. This, my friends, is why making inferences is so key and why it's one of the overarching benchmarks. Okay, so what does inferencing actually mean though? Let's head into the manual for some help. If we head to the vocabulary appendix on page 205, you'll see under the context clues subheading the type of vocabulary for inference. The reader is able to make an educated guess, use reasoning or background knowledge to determine the meaning of an unknown word. And I appreciate that there is an example there for us as well. If we head into the glossary of terms on page 216 of your manual, you'll see the keyword of infer means to form an opinion from evidence to reach a conclusion based on known facts. So they have synonyms as well for us, decide, deduce, derive, extrapolate, gather, and judge. We're going to get into some tips for how to teach inferencing in some later episodes. In the meantime, here's a kid-friendly definition. I used to say that making inferences is using your five senses to make an educated guess based on what you already know. So take what you know, plus what you read, make a guess. Another way to look at this is by a little bit of a sentence prompt. It says, I know, I think. It says, I know, I think. Great prompt really for all grade levels, but especially for upper elementary and all the way up into high school. I can't wait to go into this into more future episodes with you all, including how to use this in music class, art class, in social studies, science, of course, reading, all the things, but I'm getting ahead of myself. 
All right, folks, it says, I know, I think. Key thing that you could actually try out in your class tomorrow. Throw it on an anchor chart in your room. Have students start trying it out. In fact, start by modeling it with a think aloud yourself. Thanks all. I hope this super easy tip helped you understand a little bit about this ELA expectation. Join us for the next episode where we're going into number four on the ELA expectations, which is collaborating. Again, if you haven't already, do me a favor and hit subscribe. And if you feel so inclined, go ahead and share with a friend. All right, folks, thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.